But uh, for folks listening in at home, welcome. So uh, uh, good morning, uh, Pastor Bill Evans, uh, Fellowship Baptist Church. If you're tuning in at home or if you're uh, catching us on YouTube later, uh, we've put together a service of uh, worship and adoration. And uh, uh, this is my last Sunday leading this uh, congregation. And uh, there's going to be a, a party a little later on for my bon voyage and uh, whatever. But have got some friends visiting, and that's good to have. But it's not about uh, uh, me and us retiring out of here, out of the pulpit here, but it's about uh, worshiping Jesus. So let's stand together. Let's, 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 let's sit down. We'll let the kids' songs come for And the wise man built his house upon a rock. So get your building blocks out like this. It goes like this. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. The wise man built his house upon the rock. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down as the floods came up. Oh, the rains came down as the floods came up. Oh, the rains came down as the floods came up. And the house on the rock stood firm. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. The foolish man built his house upon the sand. And the rains came tumbling down. Oh, the rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. The rains came down and the floods came up. And the foolish man's house went splat. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. So build your life on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the blessings will come down. Oh, the blessings will come down as your prayers go up. The blessings will come down as your prayers go up. The blessings will come down as your prayers go up. So build your life on the Lord made me giggle there, Glenn, as the uh, waters are rising, and uh, if you haven't noticed, uh, did anybody have a problem getting here because of water? Joel's got jackfish jumping in his yard off jackfish lakes. They expanded. Good deal. Okay, I'm feeding on the living bread. Oh, this is a fun one. Who will ask the question first? What? Never thirst again? You guys ask first, okay? And Bill will lead them in the answer, okay? Here we go. Whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. What never thirst again? What never thirst again? And whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. Let's flip it over and here we go. I am feeding on the living bread. I am drinking at the fountain head. And whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. No, never thirst again. No, never thirst again. And whosoever drinks, Jesus said, shall never ever thirst again. Good singing, thank you kindly. That was a good one, Glenn. I, uh, we haven't sang that in a while, I don't think so. that's great. Okay, birthdays. Miss Angel got older yesterday, and uh, we missed her birthday. And whose was that? Bronze as well. Okay, so we got two people that had birthdays this week. Anyone else get older this week? By date? By date? <laughs> by date? No, nobody get older by date. Okay, all right. A anniversaries. Anybody get married longer? Nobody married longer. Okay, all right. Well, uh, what? oh, yes, okay, graduation. My uh, granddaughter, our first grad grandchild has got graduated, and uh, we held her down, drew lines on her, 250, 500. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, anyhow, so that's congratulations, Kalina. They're here with us this morning. All right. 
Happy birthday and anniversaries and all those things. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Only one will not do. Born again through salvation. How many have you? One into mom and dad's family, one into the family of God, relationship with Jesus. So uh, thank you for that. Well, we've got the worship team coming to lead us in some songs now, and we've got some uh, little folk that are aspiring to be uh, really good singers, and they're doing a fine job. Thank you. <coughs> Good morning. Uh, it's good to see everybody here, and it's, uh, I don't know about you, but I was happy to see the end of the rain, see the sunshine this morning. So uh, please stand with us and join us as we worship. Take a moment to welcome someone here. Say good morning. <coughs> hey, fine. Yes, we've already started our service, but hurry along and come in. Oh, 10 o'clock every time. Okay, we'll just come out.
All right, great, thanks. Well, it's good to have you, each one here. We welcome you in the name of the Lord uh, to a celebration of uh, uh, life that is found in Christ. Uh, the cross behind us is always a picture. Uh, he's not here for he's risen. Uh, seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for us as his people. And so he prays for us even as we offer our feeble worship. So we welcome you in the name of the Lord. We've got some uh, John Madsen back corner there uh, visiting in town, working here. And uh, John goes away back. And if you've heard me tell all of the stories over the years, we're singing Wonderful Grace of Jesus. And there's two young people in church, their eyes met, and the rest is history. And, um, and, and that's, a, that's a grace thing, God and his grace. Uh, I'm banging on doors looking for vacation Bible school people. And you have a piano player in Chapman for 35 years because of God's grace. And uh, we got these banditos away in the jam. We to see you. Blew me away. Um, others. But guess what? It's not about me. And who come to visit us? Derek Manish, good to have you here. It's about worshiping God. So we uh, trust you've signed the guest book. We had a murderer come to church one time. And in case you're famous, we want to have your signature. And, uh, but we welcome you to sign our guest book just so we can know who's uh, here. We have friends from Edmonton uh, helping out with the uh, uh, Fournier's, Fortier's, Fortier's. Yeah, a little work, eh? Uh, doing some reconstruction and others. My kids are uh, Kalina and, her, and Leah and Peter here all here from Grand Prairie. Welcome to them. We spent the graduations Friday with them there. Okay, uh, announcements are in your book there. We, uh, oh, <laughs> to forget, Pastor Dave and his wife <laughs> Anna are here, moved into town, and uh, welcome. Uh, Dave, there was a discussion. Go ahead. There was a discussion last week, Wednesday night prayer meeting. Are you doing something? Because we've been having a prayer meeting in the back corner here for a bunch of years and whatever. And the girls want to carry on. Uh, Bill's going back to work, he tells us so. Uh, but anyhow, uh, Wednesday night, were you planning anything? I says, I don't know if there's anything planned or not. Okay, well, good. Well, if you want to plan something, you tell us whatever. Otherwise, we're going to carry on in Isaiah. All right, good. Okay, and, and welcome again. Sign the guest book. Oh, yeah, you did. All right. Um, okay, uh, Camp Sacatow had a big thing last night, and there's a toast and roast thing tonight, whatever, some guy on the spit, uh, at 5. And we're starting off with dessert. Now, I, I, is there Sacatowites here? Okay, that food that was left over last night, can we have that for lunch as well? Like, there's way too much food for supper. You know, it's not your call. Uh, there's desserts in there, so we'll come tonight and bring an play, extra plate because there's major desserts that got to leave. And uh, so in the future, I'm going to try to look like Dave. And uh, you'll end up looking like me and give yourself time to David. Okay, thank you. All right, um, that's all that I have for announcements. Any other announcements that need to be made? Glenn, oh, they're on the screen. Oh, business meeting, okay, annual business meeting, uh, June 12th after church. And uh, be ready for that. Anything else there? Count video, there's a count video. How long is it? Five minutes, okay cut into the preacher's time here why don't we run it next week was that oh I see okay well that's right good deal good deal Let's do her. May 29th is International Day of Prayer for Camps. People all over the world are going to be praying for summer camps and for the gospel to be shared with kids this summer. And we'd like to invite you guys to join with us in prayer for Camp Saikatawa this summer. And so in this following video, we're going to be sharing with you guys some of the different ways that you can be praying for camp and also different ways that you guys can be partnering with us as we dive into summer 2022. After the last few summers of not knowing whether we could or couldn't have kids or what even was going on, we're super excited to once again be welcoming kids back to overnight camps. And so we've got our registrations opening right now, open right now, and uh, registrations are coming in for all of our camps, which is so exciting to think about having kids here once again, overnight, for a week, for two weeks, sharing an adventure and in relationship and getting to share the gospel with them. We've also got summer staff here now as well, and they are starting to prepare their programs for the summer. 
um, working to help us prepare camp, waking it up from the winter, and just getting super excited to be a team together, bonding, learning how to do conflict together, and to just, yeah, really become a team for the upcoming summer. Over the last 55 years, Camp Segatawa has been a safe place for so many people to come and explore and ask questions about who God is and who he's created them to be, to make new friends and try new things. And we, our hope is that we can do that for another year of kids this year. But the reality is right now, we have no cabin leaders. Right now, we don't know how we're welcoming kids in this summer. But Tassie, you said we have staff. We do, we have an amazing group of people who have answered the call. They're stepping out in support staff roles. So we have two cooks at this point already, which is super exciting. We've got a receptionist. We've got both of our seed leaders who are preparing a program for seeds to come this summer. We've got um, some maintenance guys coming in and we've got um, some media and these people are filling integral roles to help camp run, but we don't have cabin leaders. So how can you guys help? Uh, prayer, it's so important and so big, right? We are fighting a spiritual battle as we share the gospel with these kids, as we share the gospel with the staff and the seeds who are here. But also, would you pray about it, about coming and spending a week out at camp? We have all of these kids coming who want to be a camp, who want to be here. Um, but if we don't have the cabin leaders to welcome them in, we can't bring them here. Would you pray about spending a week here at camp, two weeks? Um, would you take it before the Lord and ask him if this is something that um, he has in store for you to do this summer? We are a community and we are reaching out to you guys, our community right now, asking for help to help share the gospel with these kids this summer. In the many years I've been out at camp, it's come up over and over and over again that this camp is not run by what I do, but what the, by what the team does, but it is the Lord's camp. And we've seen him work in miraculous ways every single summer. And right now it's really hard to be sitting in this wondering, Lord, what are you going to do? How is this going to work? but God, but God, we sit and wait, knowing that you will work, that this is your ministry. We don't know who he's gonna call um, or what that's gonna look like, right? But we stand in thankfulness, knowing that we don't do this on our own, rejoicing with a good God. So even though May 29th is only one day, International Day of Prayer for Camp, would you say yes to more? Would you say yes to praying for us throughout the summer as we step into ministry here at Camp Sagatawa? Would you say yes to giving in finances or donations? Would you say yes to giving up some of your time this summer to come be a cabin leader and work here at camp tangibly sharing that gospel with kids who maybe don't get to hear it anywhere else? Would you say yes? on more than just today, to seeing the miracle, the work that the Lord will do here in his ministry at Camp Sagatawa this summer, in summer 2022. Is it good? Uh, the number's there, 2361, I think it was, and that's an uh, important part to be in touch with Tassie, and uh, such there, so thank you for that. That was well done, Elaine, company. <clears throat> okay, um, we... Uh, We'll sing our, our first uh, hymn, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done. And uh, <clears throat> so loved He the world that He gave us His Son. <clears throat> Praise the Lord, let the earth hear His voice. Praise the Lord. 
the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father, through Jesus the Son, and give Him the glory, great things He has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood, to every believer the promise of God, the vilest offender. Our Father, we bless you for the, such wonderful words. Oh, to God be the glory, great things he has done. Oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of God. To every believer, the promise of God. Uh, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon can we see. Father, we bless you for the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What we've just been singing is true. It's always done for your honor, for your glory. People are brought into the family of God. Camp ministries are built up and work because of the glory of God. Uh, the people live their lives daily for the glory of God. And uh, Father, we just thank you that we can sing sound songs of praise to the glory and praise of our God today. We bless you, Father, for each gather, each our heart and each home represented in our gathering this morning. We pray, O oh God, that you'll tailor a blessing and send them out rejoicing in your goodness and your care and your love. That you'll help us, Father. We trust as we uh, minister to the challenge of serving our community, being slaves to our community, that we were slaves this week, that we helped, that we helped people a long life's way, lifting up the hands that hang down and strengthening the feeble needs, O oh God. We trust that we've been helpful this week. We encourage your people to continue in such an attitude. And Father, that uh, attitude in so many ways. And, and we saw how simply uh, the fruit of the Spirit are, are those things that work out with love uh, and joy and, and peace in our lives in the midst of storms and rising waters. Having peace is a ministry to our neighbors around us if they don't know Jesus. And so we thank you, God, for these thoughts. We ask, God, your spirit to attend here and, and work. Bless us in our time together. And then, God, for those who are laid by the side on beds of illness, draw near, touch them, make them strong. We pray for Grandma and her struggles there that she might continue to be raised up in what you would work in her life. We pray for the Vincents and Cindy's mom just expecting to step today into eternity uh, in the presence of Jesus. Uh, help them. Bless them through this time. And encourage them as they walk through that valley. It'll be a stroll. And uh, we thank you for their lives and their testimony and their love. Uh, bless them and others. Father, the people of our community who take no time to think about Jesus and his great love and what he's accomplished on their behalf. Oh, God, that your spirit would minister to those hearts and salvation today. And just bring them to the house of the Lord to check out what's going on. So receive our thanks, hear our prayer. Bless us in this time, O oh God. Be with those who couldn't be here for whatever reasons. Hold them close. Minister, Father, mightily, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> A phone call this morning that uh, Steve and Cindy can't be here, but their mother's dying in uh, uh, Fort St. John and uh, waiting to go to be with the Lord. And she's the lady that book that Anna had a book there last night from Camp Ministry, and it's about her life and, and such. So it's an interesting book. You know, there's some might be laying around back there you can pick up too. Okay, um, let's, uh, Glenn, uh, our prayer request uh, um, title is there, oneprayerchain at gmail.com. If you have prayer requests you want to send to the church for prayer, then you may use that. Uh, if you want to help keep the lights on, uh, e-transfers are acceptable at ChetwinBaptist at Gmail. And uh, other news and any updates you want that we get, we get missions. Re Is this where mission reports come on the same? The guys, what are those guys? Does it come on this site? You don't know? 
okay? Uh, she gets them somehow. <laughs> so we get reports from the Rogers and others like that. Uh, so, but if you have updates and anything you need help with or whatever and uh, such. So um, this week, uh, this should change some. Dave, your name will go up there. Mine will come down. And, uh, and I'll be forwarding all phone calls that as many as I can. Here, here's his number. Try this guy. <laughs> all right, good. Okay. Um, any other information there, Glenn, that we need? You got her? Okay. Well, then let's leave that. Let's sing again another song. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord. I thought, well, this is fitting. Uh, I call this my funeral hymn. And uh, if you're at my funeral, this hymn is supposed to be sang and to this tune. Okay. How firm a foundation. And it's, O come, will ye faithful. All right. <clears throat> Sit up straight and sing with us. Here we go. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, is laid. Jesus was laying for repose. I will not, I will not desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell, should endeavor to shake. I'll never, nor never, nor never That Jesus is talking. Jesus is talking. Let's talk about him in our message this morning. He has a promise like that in his word. I was working through some texts that uh, were special to me for ministry. And um, I went and I did the math. And uh, I want to go back to May ish, 1974. And a text that uh, came to me because I've told you a bunch of you know this. I had this plan to go to seminary. A friend of mine and I, let's make a plan that we'll see if we can get accepted at seminary. Well, we were taking courses that they knew us. We were there every Friday night with the college and careers. We hung out there, and we knew the professors and rode Camp Sega, Camp Saugeen, rode horses together with my principal and, and such. So we were well-known, but let's apply to seminary and see if we can get accepted. Guess what? Yeah. <laughs> Was going to be the plan, would be the plan. While I'm filling out my application in May that I'm making 205 an hour working for Ontario government, best job I ever had. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And 205 an hour, and uh, if I get accepted to seminary, I need $1,000 by September. And then I come to my senses, God, that's goofy. 
like the simple math, and I'm not good at math, and you know, and 205 an hour between now and May, I have no hope. My mother said, well, for mom, she's retired pretty much that time. I'm uh, 25. Well, how old am I then? 74. Getting up there anyhow. And my mom's old, and she's now working. She's got no money for me. How am I going to have $1,000 by September at 205 an hour? I shut my application, and I says, God, help me. Thanks for stopping me from running off to seminary to be a preacher so that I can help me to be a better witness to my guys at work, the guys that I worked with. And I took out my Sunday school lessons because I was teaching that. Romans 10 and 9 is our text this morning. We'll look at it. We'll work through that as we go along. And you'll see what, I, what became my call to seminary, my call to pastoral, theo, pastoral uh, work. And um, so we want this morning to look at this text. And my, my title is, I've, I've called it, The, the, the Christian Gospel. Uh, that's what I've been doing for since 74, 70, fall of 74, 75. And did I meet you in 75, you and Diane and family? Yeah. Banged on the door and uh, Karen had just become a Christian. She's looking for a church to go to. We were looking for a piano player to replace Mrs. Tipping. She was 190 years old and still playing wonderful piano. And uh, she's since gone to be with the Lord. But she was looking for help. She was delighted when Karen came in and said, I play piano and such. Our, our, our Christian gospel. Let's pray and ask God's help. Father, the things of God are spiritually discerned, you say. We need your help to understand the text that is before us. Give us grace to help to that end. By your spirit, meet with us. Open our eyes. Show us the things you'd have us see. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The first thing I want us to consider is the Christian confession. The Christian confession. Confession is this word if you confess with your mouth. Confession is two Greek words tied together. Homo is the word same, okay? And logos is word. So you're saying the same word. You're agreeing to what is on the table in the discussion. You are agreeing to that discussion. That's what this word is. They uh, confess is to agree with what's being said. Here, the agreement is expressed with the mouth. It's expressed with the mouth. Confession is an agreement to the discussion on the table with your mouth. I agree with that. And so when we have our annuals and stuff and things like that, you put your hand up. I agree with this motion. Uh, you, you have everybody agree. Anybody want to be written down as opposed? You may have a right to be written down as opposed. Most leaders in business meetings don't go for that. If it passed, too bad if you're opposed. No, you can register your op opposition to the vote. And it says the confess is to say the same thing. So confession is done with the mouth. I agree with what's being discussed and being put on the table. So the agreement in this person's mouth, from this person's mouth, is that there's a Lord. And the, the Greek doesn't have Jesus as Lord. It's just Lord and then Jesus. And there's no definite article. It's the, the Lord. It's just, uh, and the ask is, 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 a, is an apply, a, a suppliable word. You can check all this with Wayne. <laughs> Thanks. And it's a suppliable word. But there's no definite article there that whoever confesses with the mouth, the Lord, it's not that. It's just Lord. And, and beloved, what the idea is, though, to my brain, it's kind of simple. It's this, that um, uh, people in the world got to understand, and I say this at funerals all the time, and uh, rarely do you get anybody upset, that somebody bigger than you and I runs the world. Somebody in the world decided to call your loved one away. You can't talk like that. Oh, my book does. My book says, God says, I kill and I make alive. Nobody ever died and surprised God. What are you doing here, Pastor Bill? I didn't have you until when? Nobody ever died and surprised God. God says, I kill, I make alive. Nobody ever died and surprised God. And I tell people, so someone bigger than you runs the, few, runs the world. And that person is a supreme being. And that word in the Greek is called Lord. That word is called Lord. So the, it says, if you confess with your mouth, Lord, that there's a Lord out there, and he's a soft person that can run your life. And that's the issue what to come to grasp is, is that the Lord says, I run your life. You come to him as your Lord, and Lord, what do I do? You give my, I put my life in your hands with your help of your spirit, and we'll see more. And, and he says, and you run my life. You determine how much rain will, will come down the stream and flush my house away. We sang it. Don't build your house on the sandy land. How much stream will come in life? How, what, what will happen? Do I get COVID? I went through church. You're good to see everybody back. I think everybody's here. That seemed to be uh, with that. The Lord is in control. He's a sovereign God that takes care of us. That's that word. 
It's a sovereign. And so if you confess with your mouth a sovereign, Jesus. And it's that step, and this is our Christian gospel. This is what makes us different than the rest of the world. All the religions of the world, there's bazillions of them. But this one says there's a man named Jesus, and he died, and, and he split time. And lots of people come to Canada, and our, my Oriental friends, they, they have their, uh, what's that calendar? And my friend, she was born on Valentine's. Linda was born on Valentine's Day, but she celebrates a different day every year or whatever with that, uh, their, their calendar that they have. If you confess with your mouth there's a Lord, and Jesus is that Lord's name, and then he carries on from there. I want to give you a verse, Matthew 14, 27. Because this is Jesus uh, walking on the water to the guys in the boat uh, being flopped around, scared to death, and in the storm in the night. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage. And he uses the Greek word ego me, which is I am. The, this is the great I am. He says, it's the great I am. He's walking on the water. I'm the great I am. The words that he used, those guys knew, I am. And then he says, do not be afraid. You see, when we're in relationship with the great I am, we do not have to be afraid because he oversees everything in our lives, whatever it is. Hurts, pains, sorrows, grief, joys. He's in control of those things. The I am, it is I. I am, he says, do not be afraid. And then look what next 20, verse 28 says. And he says, Peter said to him, Lord, sovereign Lord, if it's you. If it's you, I'm positive, it looks like a ghost maybe coming on the water. If it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Take note of that story, okay? Take note, because we know what happens. Peter heads out across the water, and he starts looking around the way. He's good, like, this is stupid. And I'm standing in water up above my knees yesterday trying to walk across the creek, helping a person out, and uh, I'm thinking, I'm going to get swept downstream. And then I see, well, there's a, I was going to say electric fence. <laughs> there's a barbed wire fence right there. And I just hang on that, I guess. I'd hold up, maybe there's some. I don't know. I'd end up down here. And hopefully I was thinking this morning, those guys that have dug up a carcass. It's Pastor Bill. Bury him quick. Um, if it's you, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. And David and Peter could walking out there. Saw the waves. And Lord, help me. And that's the word of you. Sovereign, Lord, help me. Sovereign Lord, don't cry. You don't cry out for, uh, um, oh, I worship this clock. Oh, clock, help me. It doesn't work. There's religions of the world. Cry out, clock, help me. It doesn't work. And then, beloved, so the next verse, John 21, verse 7, and that's the one there for, therefore the disciple whom Jesus loved said to him, Peter, uh, and this is where they're coming back from fishing all night and they got nothing and whatever. Uh, therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. It's the sovereign. It's, our, it's the Lord. They knew it was that. And so when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, stripped him, and he threw himself into the sea. He's not going to try to walk. He's just going to throw himself in the sea, get to shore. Why? Because the sovereign Lord is there and has spoken to them what they ought to do. The Christian confession is agreeing with an understanding and expressing with our mouth. That there's a Lord, there's a sovereign of the universe that runs the universe, runs things that I can't control in my life. And when I see him as Jesus, then we're on the way. Because this next verse is that he's, he's called Jesus. Our Christian gospel. Call his name Jesus. Why? Because he's going to save his people from their sin. He will save his people from their sin. Call him Jesus. That's why. What's Jesus mean? It means it comes out of the word Joshua. Jehovah saves. Jesus, Joshua, the same one in Greek, one in Hebrew, the same word, same name. And it's, geez, call him Jesus. He's going to save his people from their sin. That's our Christian gospel. That's our Christian gospel. Call him Jesus. He's going to save his people from their sin. So how's he going back to, please, uh, to John 9, uh, if we can. Uh, Romans 9, I'm sorry. Um, 10 and verse 9, thank you. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus as Lord. And then, beloved, it comes to this word here. And you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Belief's an interesting word. Belief. It's, it's got to do with understanding in your head. Understanding in your head. It's, it's the, the word believe and the word faith are the same word in Greek. It's just translated belief. Zealous and jealous are the same word in Greek. Negative connotation. Positive connotations. There's only one word. Zealous and jealous are the same word. Zealous, zealous is the word. 
And here, faith. Uh, faith is, is this word of, of confidence, of understanding. It's grasping in your mind, believing in faith. The same idea. You have confidence. We use the word, the definition of faith is forsaking all, I trust him. See, our Christian confession is that we trust somebody who is bigger than us, oversees the plans of our lives. I know the plans that I have for you, the great Jehovah said, to give you a future and a hope. And God wants us to know and to understand that he's looking in. He's looking in on your life. What's going on? He's looking in. And we saw that last week. We talked about Stephen. And there he is being stoned. And he says, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Why is he standing? He's supposed to be sitting because he's looking in on, on the life of your situation, whatever you got going. He's looking in on your life. He's seeing your circumstances. He sees those things, the hurts. And got all your tears in a bottle, he says, and they're dated in time, Psalm 56. He's looking in. Faith comes to grasp that situation but if you believe in your heart and that faith gets into your inner man that faith gets into your inner man that's the real heart that's the real you the real inner person is you you see who you really are is how you think and and how you act and all those things is that there and if you believe in your heart your inner man that's where you're on your way and what is your belief supposed to be that God has raised him from the dead I was asked that question, is there real evidence? I said, well, the gospel saves Paul writing. And he says, there was over 500 people. If you go into any court of law and say, 500 of us saw this man walking around. And he say, yeah, I saw him on Tuesday. He was over there cooking fish with Peter and them guys. And, and then he was over there on Wednesday. And someone else saw him on Sunday. And, and uh, oh, yeah, he showed up Sunday, had holes in his hands, and told Thomas to come and touch him. If 500 people saw this, you can't walk in any court of law. And, and that's, that's going to be guilty or innocent, or whatever you want. If you believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead. We celebrate an empty cross, an empty tomb. See, the, the tomb isn't marked. Uh, they, they, he bought it from a rich guy. He was with, made with the, buried with the rich in his death, he says. And the heart of God raised him from the dead, and you will be saved. Saved is forgiven. Saved is cleansed. Cleans, saved is made a child of God. Saved is our sins are buried in the deepest sea or the, uh, the deepest creek, uh, if you want, for Chet one. And, and those things are taken away. And not only does he take away our sin, but he takes away the guilt that's inherent. It comes with our sin. And I said, as a pastor, and Dave, you'll find as people come, and, and I can't get over that I did that. I can't get over that I did that. And our job is to present that God offers the word propitiation, somebody said, is the word that deals with that idea of taking away the sin, past, present, future that we have, and working with that situation out, and the guilt that's inherent in it. Because the devil is the one who likes to play with the guilt story, right? You don't really think you're forgiven for doing that. You asked all that prayer you did last week, and you just stripped and skinned your knee again, and you said bleep. And he just likes to play that. And you believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead. You're going to be saved. That's our gospel. Believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 19, Paul made this statement, same writer. He says, if we have hope in Christ in this life only, oh, we're a pity lot. Beloved, he says, you Christians meet every Sunday and worship and worship God and adore him and say nice prayers and whatever, but if it's only good for this life, what's the use? No use is all. No use is the answer. There's no use. Well, why would, what's the use of celebrating a dead sovereign? Well, it got us last Monday off. Wasn't that, that, that celebration last Sunday was from that dead queen, Queen Elizabeth's mother, wasn't it? We're still celebrating her. What's that? Victoria? That's the one we're celebrating, and she's dead. Yeah. What's the use of celebrating a dead sovereign? Is the question. And so, if you believe he's been raised from the dead, if we've hoped in somebody who's been dead, no use. And Paul argues that in 1 Corinthians 15. He says, we've hoped in, we're, we're a miserable lot. We're a pitied lot. And <laughs> those Christians, those Baptists, your God, they're dumb. They worship some guy that doesn't do any good. Worship somebody that doesn't do no good. A pitied lot. Let's go on. Our next verse is uh, verse 10. And it says, now he's moved on from verse 9. And he says, for with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. This is good. Again, the heart, that inner man person. This belief is, goes into the inner man, okay? And uh, this belief written here, and uh, according to uh, my good friend, Mr. Robertson, he says this word belief is a passive. 
a passive word? I passively believe? That's not me actively taking a second. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. I got this. I believe. He says, no, it's God coming to you and uh, showing you all the things. But his spirit working with my spirit, his spirit working on my heart. My spirit is dead. And he comes and he, and he revives it. He starts, uh, you know, he, he goes in and he flicks on some lights. And now somebody is home. Why? Because somebody has flicked on the lights. And we use that illustration of, uh, hey, Siri, turn on my flashlight. And uh, uh, whatever. And that's like the spirit of God. He comes to our lives. And he says, hey. And so he says, and with, for with a heart, the inner being, a person is passively believing. They brought to belief and faith. Passively and this passive action of, uh, with God in our lives results in righteousness. Results in righteousness. Righteousness and justification are, again, the same word. What is justified? I'm thinking this through. You know what? The problem in our society with our justice system is what? Is because the judges justify everybody. It's not a matter the guy's dead, guilty. Everybody, well, one person saw the guy shoot the person and whatever. And the judge says, well... This guy says he thinks he saw him over there the night of that happening. Judge says, you're forgiven, son. You're free. And I told you I was sitting in, in court there with Evelyn. And, then, and there's a unicorn on the justice crest above the judge's head. There's a unicorn. There's a, there's a, a situation of mythical goofiness in our justice system. You guys know how to do that on the Internet. Start screaming and hollering. Say, no, we can't have this, folks. You're blowing my mind. Justice is, is when... You're dead guilty. And the judge should put you in jail for life or whatever. But when it comes to God, if you have a relationship with my son and enjoy that, he says, I'll declare you righteous because that's what it is, a legal term. You are declared righteous before me, before God. So Bill Evans dies today, next week or whenever you get to sing How Firm a Foundation. When I stand before Jesus, I can say, well, I served in Chetwin for 35 years. Oh, come on in. Good night. Wrong answer. I'm standing there with somebody. I know he put his arm on my shoulder. What? This man has trusted me, Father, to have his sins taken away. He's trusted me. My sin, my blood has covered his sin. It's gone. His guilt is gone. Welcome in. 35 years. Little reward. Here's a quarter. Here's a quarter. My righteousness is in Christ. I enter the presence of God. My Savior with me. He's with me. Come on in. For with the heart, a person believes, resulting in righteousness. And then with the mouth, confession is made. And that's the active part now is to confess. And do we see this story? Over the years, David, over the years, I've seen people. And I, I didn't share with them the gospel. Maybe it's a press for understanding of the gospel. And, and, and then they died. And guess what you find? Somebody at their funeral says, I led them to the Lord, whatever, and they were rejoicing in the Lord. I talked to them last week. They were all excited about Jesus and whatever. And that's the work of the Spirit of God. Singing already this morning, what words? We've talked about righteousness in our singing. we talked about other things, holiness and all those things. We've talked about these things. David, that's a God thing. I don't tell them what I preach on. I did not tell anybody what I was preaching on. And I had this message written out before Bill preached in case he phoned in sick. And so I had a little bit of a decent week. I didn't tell them what I was preaching on. And they tie the words and they do the stuff together. That's the work of the Spirit of God. With the heart, a person believes is all he can write. Just with the mouth, confession is made. What's the confession? Saying the same thing. God says Bill Evans is a sinner. I agree. I'll tell you that, God. I know I'm a sinner. My wife knows I'm a sinner. You know I'm a sinner. Bill started off last week. He said he inherited it from his parents and their parents. And down the line, yeah, two weeks ago. With a heart, the person believes, resulting in righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made, resulting in salvation. Where do we have an example of that? Luke 23, 39 to 41. There's two men hanging on the cross with Jesus. One of the criminals who were hanged there was hurling abuse at him. Hey, Jesus, if you're really Jesus, if you're really that God thing, person, son, and whatever you are, get out from the cross and take us with you. Save yourself and us. But the other answered them, rebuking him, said, Sir, uh, uh, George, Henry, whatever your name is, Pete, let's call him Joe. Joe, he says, do you not even fear God since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed for suffering justly, righteously, we deserve what we're getting. For we are ourselves receiving what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
This man has done nothing wrong. Did I end there? Okay. Well, you know the rest of the story. He says, Jesus, remember me when you come to your kingdom. And Jesus says, today you're going to be with me in paradise in the presence of God. He's done nothing wrong. You see the confession with the mouth? He's believed. He's understood. He caught on. And he confessed with his mouth, hey, Joe, you're in the same condemnation as God. Are you not afraid of that? We're suffering justly. This man's done nothing wrong. That's confession to salvation, showing he's got it. It's real in his life. Let's go on quickly to the other verses there. Hey, this was called the Christianizing process. <laughs> I missed that point uh, there, whatever. And he says, uh, verse 11, he says, uh, uh, there he says, for the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be disappointed, not be put to shame. Say, well, the devil try to pull up your sins. Sometimes the church is interested in those. Jesus is not if it's forgiven. So there he says, whoever believes will, will be, not be disappointed. God will take care of those. Verse 12 says there, he says, For there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord is the Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call upon him. The great riches of God that come through relationship with Jesus Christ. I was young, but now I'm old, and I've never seen the righteous begging bread. And I'll tell you, I can't get you people to quit feeding me. I spent $25 for a loaf of bread last night. <laughs> it's really tasty. Uh, I'm not sharing it, uh, but uh, and because uh, I expect you guys are going to give me some more today with the, I saw a big cake come in and whatever. Bounding in riches for all who call upon him. And then verse 13 says, for whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Whoever will call, they will be saved. That's a promise from God. Bill Evans took that promise years ago at age 15. Understood I needed to have somebody run my life because I was doing a great job. Verse 14 says, then how, then they, how then will they call on him whom they've not believed? Now remember, I was telling you about verse 9 is my Sunday school verse. I want the kids to memorize that verse. How then will they call on him who have, they have not believed? How will people catch on? Why would you talk to somebody you don't believe is there? How will they believe in him who have, they've not heard? Heard is an interesting word. Cool. It's pregnant with meaning. It means to hear and respond, not just hear. Oh, heard, did you hear that? Yeah, I heard. It sounded like a gunshot um, by the Rod and Gun Club. Uh, it's it's a hearing and understanding. And so how will they believe in him whom they've not heard and grasp what was being said? So how is this going to happen without a preacher? And beloved, 10 minutes after I thank God for stopping me from going to seminary to be a preacher, this verse comes off my Bible. Help me to be a witness at work. How are they going to hear without a preacher? And when I got there before I was leaving, I just share with some of the guys. How are they going to hear without a preacher? Thanks, God, for stopping me. No, how are they going to hear without a preacher? That's been my testimony. That's my chapter that I was working on for Sunday school. And that verse came off the page 10 minutes after I said, thanks for stopping me from being a preacher. So verse 15 says, how will they preach unless they're sent? The church sends out people. The church ordains people. The church calls people. There's an argument out there with Ontario, and the lady admitted it from the Baptist office. My niece is getting married. And I say, oh, in Ontario, you're two boys in the church, McQueen kids were getting married. And back in COVID, you could only have 50 people. What are we going to do? We can only have 50 people in a park. You only have 50 people. They got the youngest one to apply for a license, and he did his brother's wedding. That's Alberta. I don't know what VC's like because I have a license. But in Ontario, you've got to prick your finger. <laughs> and you've got to stand with blood. And you have to send them all your documentation that you're a pastor in the West, what church pays you. So I have to have it done by tomorrow. And uh, they, uh, they want to know all these things. All these things. To get a license to marry somebody in Ontario. That is weird, right? How do they preach unless they're sent? The church has sent people out. The church has bring people in. When you're called to be a pastor, you're ordained by God for that position. Just as is written, you end up with beautiful feet of those who bring good news. You share the gospel with anybody, Jesus says, God, the Lord says, you have beautiful feet. Let's go to uh, the last point here then is this. Um, um, we are of good courage, and I say, prefer rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. This is the outcome. That's my last one there. What, what are the blessings of having this relationship with the Lord, believing our gospel, having this conscious understanding and verbalizing with our mouth that Christ Jesus is, is my Lord and he died for my sins and he's whatever. He offers me the peace of God that passes understanding, Paul said. 
In the midst of all the storms of life, I have peace. How do you have peace? Because I have Jesus living in my heart. He's the sovereign who oversees the world, and therefore, I have peace. And then the other one is the sting of death. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about that. You get down there far enough. And the sting of death is a way. It's, Steve texted me this morning, Pastor Bill, we won't be there because my mother-in-law is hoping to be with Jesus today, and her daughter wants to be there. Just pray for us. The sting of death is gone. Absent from body, present with the Lord. That's the hope of the Christian. When you have a relationship with Jesus, he's going to deal with it. There he is. Back to verse John. Did I give you First John 1, or Romans 10, verse 9 at the start? Can I go back up there, please, William? Thanks. Uh, he says that, uh, you notice there, that if. The whole story, beloved, hinges on this word if. If you confess with your mouth. If you understand, say, God, I'm a sinner. I agree. The Bible says, Pastor Bill says, he is, and uh, I agree, I am. I agree with you that I'm a sinner. You tell that, tell that statement to God and then believe in your heart God's raised him from the dead. He says, you shall be saved. You will be. God says, this is my name's on the line here. I promise that whoever makes that statement, they will be saved. They'll be forgiven. They'll have the right to the peace of God that passes understanding. They will. But trust our hearts will be encouraged with those things. That's our Christian gospel uh, summed up. It's a confession of faith and understanding. Helped by the Spirit of God to come to a relationship with Jesus. I trust you have it. Don't understand that. I'm here. Dave's here. My number's not changing. You'll find Dave's. And others, your Christian friends. Get into the Word. Read the Gospel of John. It's just all there so plain. That's what you have to do. Let's sing our closing song. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. It's kind of our, it's a summation of our Christian faith. Uh, relationship. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. And ladies, for you to know the parts, please sing them uh, if you would. We appreciate it. Let's stand together as we sing. Glenn, you going to dismiss us? Run and get your mic. Can you pray? Okay. Sing hallelujah to the Lord. Father, we thank you for the power of the gospel and that your spirit uh, uh, makes it alive in us and uh, it completely transforms a life um, when you're involved in that, in that powerful message. And I pray that, um, that our church would, uh, would just uh, be engaged in the work that you have for us in our community as we know how beautiful the feet are those who bring good news and we want each person each member of this church uh, to experience that um, the privilege of of, of taking um, uh, the message of the gospel to our community 
because you have entrusted that to us, Lord, and you partner with us um, despite our faults and our weaknesses, um, yet you, you want to partner with us, and we, we thank you for that and that you use us. Lord, we thank you for being um, with Pastor Bill over these years and, and his faithfulness to, to preaching the gospel um, to our community and leading our church. Um, we pray for your blessing on him in the next chapter of his life, and we just, we just thank you for that. We pray for the whole transition um, to David and Anna as they, as they come into our church. Um, so we just we thank you for, for this day that we can uh, just see that happen and that, uh, that Bill can, can preach this, this Sunday, and we, we thank you for the message. We pray that it would go with us this week in our hearts and affect our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>